Chairman Holland, members of the board, Dr. Casey, thank you for giving me a couple of minutes tonight to talk about the uh, broadband efforts in the county. I'm going to give you a quick update. I've got about 10 slides. I'll be happy to take any questions along the way. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. So um, it's always good to define what broadband is before we start talking about this. Just a quick, few quick notes about this. The current federal communication standard is 25 megabits of download speed, 3 megabits of upload speed. That's a pretty dated standard. We expect them to change that in the coming, uh, the coming months to 100 megabits in each direction. I'm sure you all have more than that at home. Uh, some of the grant programs we're actually seeing now require an excess of what the federal standard is when you, when you propose your project. This can be either delivered uh, wired to your home, to your residence, to your business, or via fixed wireless. Okay, so what's not considered broadband is interesting for us to consider. Anything that's got to do with mobile cellular technology is not broadband. 4G, LTE, even 5G, irregardless of how fast it is, is not considered broadband from a federal perspective. Nothing to do with satellites considered uh, broadband, nor is digital subscriber line, the uh, older twisted pair copper way of delivering broadband. So satellite is really sort of the, uh, could be the game changer here. This could be the disruptor with uh, SpaceX, Elon Musk's effort coming out, of, or Starlink, which is a SpaceX company uh, by Elon Musk, is coming out of beta next month. So anyone will be able to apply for a Starlink dish to get broadband speeds, very good level of service to their home uh, in, in the United States. So we're, we're, gonna, we're watching that very, very carefully. So in terms of service availability, this is where we've really started with our efforts. You know, overcoming the digital divide is, is a big topic and there's a lot to it, but you have to make sure that you've got good coverage and that you know where your coverage gaps are in your locality for your, for your residents. So we used GIS, we used our parcel layer, we used real estate data, commissioner of the revenue data, we used our vendor systems to come up with a list of unserved residents, and then we asked vendors to then further refine that list. And we have that down to 726 uh, parcels in Chesterfield that do not have uh, broadband coverage. It was formally reported at 1,200. We've now got it down to 726 after the vendors took a look at the data and were able to run it through their systems and clean it up from a data perspective. We've used programmers, data analysts, GIS specialists, and a lot of different, a lot of different roles technology-wise uh, to pull this together. And uh, we really do have very good, very strong penetration of broadband in Chesterfield. We're very fortunate like that. Uh, unfortunately, we do still have unserved. So if you're one of the 726, your opinion of our broadband coverage in Chesterfield is not very good. Uh, although we do have, you know, very high level, that we do still have some, some ways to go. Uh, broadband projects at the local level really are a team sport. Uh, localities are prohibited from having their own internet service providers or being an internet service provider. So partnerships are a must, um, especially for state grant programs. You have to have a, a, private, a pro public private partnership Electric cooperatives have really stepped up in this regard. Uh, they, by law, can have a sub subsidiary part of their business that provides internet service. So you can take a look at Central Virginia Electric Cooperative has a subsidiary uh, called Firefly. They run fiber on the same poles that Central Virginia uses to deliver electric service all the way to the home. It's been a very successful partnership. Electric utilities also play an important role. Uh, James Beasley is here and will be presenting later. They can provide middle mile service in partnership with other ISPs. That middle mile sometimes is the most expensive. And, you know, Dominion already has a very extensive network of towers and lines and, and infrastructure that can be used there. Uh, we'll talk about the body program in a little bit. And uh, a lot of these vendors we've noticed have matured over the course of time. You know, four or five years ago, being a wireless internet service provider or being an internet service provider was sort of hit and miss, quite frankly. There were some real service delivery issues with these companies. They've really figured it out now. They are getting very high marks from customer service. They're getting people connected to the internet and they're really making a big difference. And we have worked with or talked to or met with every single person on this slide. There are just a lot of people involved in, the, um, in these partnerships. Southside is a very important partner of ours. 
Uh, they are the one electric cooperative that delivers service in Chesterfield in the southern part of the county. And this is a map of their service territory. You can see where the overhead lines are in blue and then the underground lines are in green. Uh, they're a very important partner. They've already got many miles of Chesterfield or of Comcast fiber in their infrastructure. Comcast uses them you know, extensively. So when we're ready to build out our fiber plant uh, to include the 726, Southside stands ready to, um, with pole attachments and make ready work. They have a very large service area, a very small part of it's in Chesterfield, but a very large service area overall. And Lloyd Linhart is our contact there and he stands ready to, to partner with us on this. We had a very, a very large meeting with them about a month ago. Mr. Carroll, you were there. We had, we had Amelia, we had Dinwiddie, we had uh, various people from Southside, even had a board member from Southside <clears throat> from your area. And it was a, lot, a really great discussion. They're very anxious to, uh, to partner with us. And as I said, you know, there are a lot of different ways to deliver electric service in Virginia. <laughs> a lot of electric uh, co-ops, there are three electric uh, utilities, investor-owned utilities, and then there are a number of cooperatives. You can see from this map the gray area from Powhatan down to Amelia and part of Chesterfield. That's Southside Electric Cooperative. It's a very large area, very rural. So they don't have the benefit of a lot of business the way that some of the electric cooperatives have. They have to deal with a lot of very rural areas. So let's talk about the grant program. Um, referred to as VADI, the Virginia Telecommunications Initiative. It's run out of the Department of Housing and Community Development. It's an executive branch agency, the state. And their primary objective is to provide financial assistance for these broadband projects to hook people up to the internet, to, to make served out of the unserved from a broadband perspective. And uh, in 2022, and it's the project year 2022, it begins January of 2022, they were competing for $50 million in funding. Now, that was the initial compete, was for $50 million. The governor decided to take $700 million in ARPA funds and commit it to this program. So they can deploy up to, you know, theoretically up to $750 million in one funding cycle. Now they won't do that much. I'm sure they will hold some back for the subsequent year for the 2023 project year. Um, but the awards are based on a scoring formula. Uh, they're weighted towards localities that bring projects for universal coverage. Okay, so if you're only gonna cherry pick a few areas of your locality where it's convenient to provide service, you're not gonna be weighted as heavily in your app as, as a locality that says, everyone in our locality will have coverage at the end of this project. So that's the application that we submitted, was for universal coverage. And special construction costs is another oddity if uh, they don't wanna see lines run down the public right of way and then customers still have to pay many thousands of dollars because their house is 300 or 400 or 500 feet from the public right away, it's called a long drop scenario. And so they, they want the projects to include those costs as well, and ours did. So they take a look at the county match, they take a look at how big the coverage area is, the number of passings or the number of dwellings that you pass, it heavily factors in. And again, requires a public-private partnership. Applications were due uh, Tuesday the 14th, and our application was submitted um, by the 14th. And again, we've talked about the $700 million in, uh, in ARPA funds that have, been, that have been committed to this. So that's the applications that were submitted. This was a record year, obviously, because the governor put the $700 million back into the, into the fray here. Uh, 84 localities you know, are covered by these uh, applications this year. This is gonna be a big construction year for broadband in Virginia. And they, there's actually request, requests out, to, out there totaling almost a billion dollars, 943 million in total requests, and um, approximately 300,000 um, locations to be passed. The federal auctions that have gone on for broadband coverage may reduce that somewhat. The feds are still deciding who they're going to give grant money to for different, for different grant programs. And it takes them a lot longer than it takes the state to move in this direction. As I said, the timeline, you know, they were applications through the 14th, our, ours is in. Um, we will find out by the end of the year, hopefully, uh, you know, whether we win the grant or not, or how much we win or what the conditions are. 
and then January, as, as early as January, we should be able to kick the project off with Comcast. So uh, this is our first time submitting. It was a real eye-opening experience working with Comcast on this. Uh, they are our private partner. Comcast has the strongest network, the biggest infrastructure footprint in Chesterfield, so they were a logical place to go to, to extend service. And there's 726 locations, as I said. It's also 150 miles of fiber that they will lay. And it doesn't look like 150 miles when I show you the map, but you have to remember that every long drop down a driveway you know, counts. So when you have a bunch of those in a row, as we do in the Matoka District, you know, it adds up to, to many miles. Um, Comcast is putting up $1.5 million. Chesterfield is committed $1 million, and that comes from ARPA funding. So it's not, it's not revenue, it's coming from the ARPA. And um, we're asking for $7.8 million from the, from the grant program. Won't be any special construction costs for the residents. Uh, they will have the line taken all the way to their home, no matter whether they're a mile down the driveway or 20 feet down the driveway. They're gonna get it all the way to their home with no special construction costs. And this will be un true universal coverage for the county. There won't be anybody left behind, and at least the availability part of the digital divide will be overcome in, in the county. Now, if you do the math on this, it looks like a really expensive project, and we get that. It's expensive for a lot of different reasons. Number one, it's universal coverage. So we have to cover that one home that's in the northern part of Midlothian. That's not covered by anything else, just the one home out there. Plus, we have to cover, you know, 500 homes in the Matoica district as well. And so filling in the gaps when you have to provide services just for that one home or that home or that home, it gets really expensive. It's not as expensive when you're just running it down one street and you're picking up, you're picking up dozens and dozens of houses. So the universal coverage drives the price up. The distance to the right of way from the dwellings drives up the price. It requires special engineering and construction from Comcast. And we're outside of regulated coverage here. Uh, the, the, the providers have to provide um, uh, cable TV service if there's more than, I think, than 21 units per route mile. And when you get out into the rural parts of the county, you don't have 21 units per route mile. So it's not regulated that they have to provide, have to provide the coverage. And again, we're just filling in the gaps. So this is the map. This was produced by Comcast. It's what was submitted. I wanted to show you what we had submitted, um, you know, as, as part of the authoritative view of what is the 726 locations. Uh, over 80% of them are in the Matoica district, <laughs> okay? So there you go. The, uh, you see the green lines in, in the map are where they really have to run, like to, they have to pick up new roads and to run new infrastructure. Remember the map I showed you about Southside Electric Cooperative? You know, probably half of what we have to do for Matoica is in Southside Electric Cooperative service area. So we'll be working with them and Comcast on this. Um, so this really does help us quite a bit. Every time we run every one of these green lines you see, every parcel that's split on that green line, every piece of development on that green line will already have service in the public right of way. So it really does position us well for the future. So that's the last slide. Um, again, please remember that uh, the digital divide is really about more than just availability. You know, we can make sure that it's available at every single address, broadband's available at every single address in Chesterfield, and we'll still have a very large amount of work to do for the digital divide. Making sure the residents have devices to use, making sure that they know, they have the skills to use the devices, that they can afford the, um, the, the broadband that's in front of their home, uh, and that all these resources can be made available to them is very important. Um, I will tell you that um, this is really an intersectional um, uh, opportunity. It requires a lot of different departments. So I reached out for the grant application. I reached out to Center for Information and Resources. I reached out to the libraries. I reached out broadly to ask about what programs we have to support this. And that'll be the subject of another presentation to you about our digital equity efforts in bridging the digital divide. Uh, just a quick word about the federal infrastructure bill. You'll see this in the press. Uh, as this bill winds its way through the House and Senate, in its current form, it provides $42 billion of funding to overcome the digital divide in America. That's not just about 
availability with this bill. It's about providing access to resources. It's about providing grants and um, income assistance if you can't afford your broadband. Uh, it's about um, you know providing a minimum level of funding for every state. Every state will get $100 million and not have to do anything. But you can apply for more than that depending on the programs that you've got. So it is a big bill. It may have its own grant submission process, unfortunately. We're hoping that they use the state's process because we're already embedded with that. Uh, but it may come with its own grant submission process. Um, if you have constituents, people ask you about broadband in Chesterfield, please send them my way. Uh, we have an email address, broadband at chesterfield.gov, that we give to people and say if you have questions, it's monitored by me and my staff. We can answer any questions about availability or, or access there. And I will tell you that a recent uh, survey that we did uh, for residents, you may have seen it, went out to ask about people's attitudes towards broadband in the county. 75% of the respondents responded that they felt like their broadband access was just as important as water and electricity to them being able to run their lives. So with deference to Mr. Hayes, uh, you know, it's just we're looking at another utility function that's, that's highly important to our residents. And uh, overcoming that digital divide will be subject of a lot of work of ours moving forward. So that's my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Any questions, board members? Mr. Chair? Yes. First of all, I want to say uh, thank you to you and your staff for the tremendous undertaking. Uh, I know from the meeting we had last month, this was a tremendous amount of work just to get to where we are today to identify all of the locations throughout the county that were underserved. I think one of the lessons we learned during COVID last year when the kids were uh, not able to go to school, there were many people in our community that struggled for their children to learn because they did not have broadband capability and we were trying to teach our, our kids um, remotely. I mean, this is in a very minor and small comparison. This is, if you go back to our generation, you know, if, if you had the Encyclopedia Britannica in your house as a young person, you had more information at your fingertips than anybody else did. And when we talk about broadband, we talk about putting all that information at the fingertips of not just our children, uh, but everybody in the community. Uh, and it also helps with any type of uh, business uh, ventures that they may have as well. So I, I, I think that it's uh, this is a forward thinking project uh, that um, I think it's important for our citizens to know that with all the other things that we have going on, we're still trying to find ways uh, outside of the box to, to bring everything forward within the community. And I hope we get the grant because I think it'll make a big difference uh, for all of the people in, in, in Chesterfield County, especially the, right now the ones that are on the server. I appreciate uh, Southside Electric's uh, ability to work with us on this and allow for infrastructure to be put on their structures. Uh, working with Comcast and the internet service providers, it's gonna be a great partnership. Uh, and that perhaps if it works out well here, other communities uh, across the South Side Electric um, District will uh, consider entering in the same type partnership to be able to provide something fantastic for their community as well. So um, again, thank you. It's a great presentation, a lot of hard work, and I look forward to, to hearing what happens with the grant. 